continuing on with our discussion on Faraday's law, which I will write again. DDT, there's an N in there somewhere. We see that the EMF or the induced voltage depends on the change of magnetic flux over time. Now flux, of course, depends on B dot N dA, so you could possibly have your B changes over time. You can possibly have your area changes over time, but also you can have, because of this dot product, that the orientation changes over time. And this question deals with this last case. So here we have a coil with a some number of turns, say like that, um, with a certain area, and it's in the plane perpendicular to the field. So let's say my B looks like that, and hey, there's my N. And then suddenly, later, we flip it 180 degrees, and the N is back the other way. So after 180 degrees flip, that's how it looks like, which affects our dot product in the flux calculation. Because the dot product here, because they're parallel, is simply just the magnitude of B, because magnitude of N is one, being a unit vector. Whereas in this case, we get the negative because they're anti-parallel. This here is basically the basis of most electric power generator that runs on a turbine of some sort, because we continually turn and turn this coil around in a magnetic field, continuously changing that orientation. We're just going to start a simple case where we simply flip it around 180 degrees so that the dot product term goes from positive to negative, basically. So again, we're not so much concerned with the direction, so we're going to absolute value sign everywhere. We can rewrite this as basically the dt, since b dot n will be constant for every single point along the area for a given at any given time. The a can come out, and then we're left with this thing, which we already know will change from positive b to negative b. And since we're talking about average, instead of talking about differential like that, we're going to just simply say that, which is just final minus original. So we have final minus the original, still with the absolute value sign. So we get that it's Na times 2b over your delta t. I'm just going to slip this over here. We have 50 times my area, which is given in centimeters squared. So when converted, make sure to not just divide by 100, but divide by 100 squared, times 2, times my 0 0.75 Tesla, all divided by 0 0.2 seconds. So the average EMF works out to be 0 0.375 volts. Of course, knowing the rate that it spins at, we can, instead of just looking at the parallel and anti-parallel case, we know that in between, in the future, maybe, we can look at it as a cosine theta term, which will have a certain d theta dt, which is your omega, if that omega is constant, etc., etc., and then we can analyze full on what a generator does as we spin that coil around in the magnetic field. But in any case, this case, they just ask us for the average, so here's the answer.